Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the EcoStructure Machine Expert HVAC. I'm your host, Leandro Mad, and in this video what we're going to see is the IO scanner that we have on the M172 in order to read and write information to servers on the network. So let's go to the software. So in the previous video we saw how we can use the function blocks, okay, in order to read and write information to the devices on the network. Um, that works good okay if we want to have some kind of versatility in terms of changing the unit id for example the address and the amount of information that we are going to read to two okay so that that's fine and you can indicate when to read and write it's quite handy if you want to create your own function blocks in order to read to one specific device and then you can protect your code in a block that's fine um another way is to use the AI scanner so you avoid to do all these things okay of when to execute and blah blah there is a part on the ones with you that can do that for you so let's disconnect from here and go to the configuration so in the previous videos we have already created some variables in order to use when we want to connect to a server so in my case again i'm going to connect to the same uh, modicon m221 they're going to have in my network in order to read and write information to it okay and i have on the m221 i want to read and write information from this part i'm going to read this five elements and i'm going to write to these five elements okay so i created on the status five variables for the reading part and five variables for the writing part okay and it's important for you to give that nice fancy name so we are able to reuse it and do it in the code. So for the AIO scanner, what we need to do is to go to the Ethernet port. Of course, before this is already client. Okay. And here we just need to add. On the add, we have ATV320 and ATV630. But in our case, we're going to use a generic mod bus. So here, add it. And I'm going to change the name to uh, my m221 i'm going to change the name to i m221 doesn't need to be the same but i'm going to change it here is the ip address 192.168.1.221 and then the not number i'm just going to leave it that way because we're going to use that for troubleshooting in the next video so the unit id okay in my case it's going to be 255 i already explained that to you you need to check on the other device which is the unit id that you need to use it's an identifier additional identifier that you have in the case of the n modicon m21 we have the possibility to change that we go here if you enable this modus mapping you have the possibility to change the unit id and have another one for one specific area for those parameters but uh, i'm not going to do that in this case i just want to make it simple okay for you to understand and see how it works so and then you have the wave for send to resend information and then uh, if you want to swap the information that you're reading to and that's it okay that is for the configuration itself of the other device that you're going to communicate to this is similar to this part on the function block these two elements okay and of course the timeout that basically it now what is missing is which is the modbus function block that i need to use in order to read and write information directly so for that, if we go to the configuration here, when we select this, oops, here we have in the catalog all the different modulus function. So we just drag and drop over here the right function block that we need to use. So in my case, I'm going to use a read holding register and a write holding register. So that's something that you need to check on the server that you're going to read and write information to, okay? Because not all accept holding register. They just need to use input register or coil so that is up to the server which are the functions that you need to use for the client now in my case i know they need to use this one i just drag and drop it over here and this one just write and drop it over here if you don't want to do that just right click add and then you have all the lists okay here i'm going to change the name there is no change name but if you press f2 
you can change that and do 50 to MW54 MW no 60 to MW64 I have here so the start address is going to be the 50 okay and here we have the point in time something important that you need to take care of is that I don't want to read and load this again so I'm going to do it just one we saw that in this case is a start by one okay so we need to the zero on the end and the end to one will be my one and the 172 so i need to add one to the position that i want so if i want to read the mw50 on the m221 what i need to do is to use the mw and the the variable 50 the value 50 plus one so it's going to be 51 okay otherwise you're going to read from the end of you 49 to the end of you for um 53 okay and the same can be applied for this one for the end of you 60. now how i can use the information in my code well you have this holding register tab here you just need to assign add 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 you can add more okay but we just need to limit that to the variables that we want. So we're going to use this and remove another one. So this is how we can add like uh, the elements in order to reuse. Now that we have added the addresses that we're going to read to, we just need to assign. And the assign would be linking to the variables that we have on the status. So assign here. Just need to assign all of them. And then I just directly use that in my code without doing this. Okay, it's done automatically on the AO scanner. Now the same needs to be applied for the uh, NW60. So here I'm going to add another four going to assign okay okay and okay if you want to see a description here you can probably use here go to description so it's going to be um m so modicon m to one mw 61 if i compile this and if we go back to here i thought i had the things here hmm. interesting uh we see note mm. that's it compile Okay, I thought that it's gonna be here, maybe my mistake. So uh, add a, new, a good assignation of the label for here to identify what it is. I was almost sure that was that. Hmm, interesting. Okay, no worries. So now that we have this, okay, we need to download the full configuration to the controller. Okay, so we need to connect yes uh, before doing that i need to remove this block otherwise there's going to be some conflict okay now i'm going to connect to the controller okay it's a different code yes connect and now that i have made all this modification it's time to make a full download okay otherwise you are not able to see this device so download all okay way to finish to download all we download the display the code the default parameters and the connection uh, file that i need in order to the m to uh, 172 to connect to the other devices
Yes. And let's see. Yes, I want to reboot it now. So just wait for a couple of seconds. Okay. And it's important for you to know the difference between using the function block and the EOS scanner. And based on the solution that you want to give, which one is going to be the best one. Control C. Mm -hmm. Control C. Okay, it will stop. So, so now I'm going to connect back to the M172. Okay, yes. And now what I'm going to do is to use the watch. I'm going to delete all this and I'm going to use this. I need to put it by one and you can see I start reading something, which is good. And then it's reading without using this thing, okay, because it's not executed. Okay. It's not executed, as you can see it's in the it's not executed anymore. Drag and drop, Oop. drag and drop, drag and drop, and drag and drop. So now, if we go to the end to the one, if I start modifying this, one, two, three, forty-five. Okay, it's doing it, which is fine. Now, this should be written. Let's see if I forgot about something here. Sixty one. Interesting. So, these values over here should be change the one on the M221. And there we go. Okay. So, I understand now. I forgot. So, as there wasn't any change on the variables the previous variables that we had at the end of the one didn't change okay i haven't done any wrong operation at all the thing is that this didn't update uh, because it needed a change on the variable and the, the, everything is always zero so if i press 78 78 now if i press 45 it will not change because it needs a change on the other side okay Okay, this doesn't change. This is the behavior. So if I select this one, one, it will change everything. Okay. And the reason is because it's here, right on variation. Okay, so if I, if this was in zero, okay, it will always be updating the value on the other side. Okay, so careful. Okay, so this is how you can read and write information probably in a DC way without using the function blocks and uh, without using these function blocks in order to change the data from the buffer to the so to the software. Okay, in a simple way. But the other thing is that you don't have this versatility of uh, changing the AP address easily in this way, having a different variables. Uh, you don't have that versatility. You just need to stick with this. Okay. There is um, doo -doo -doo -doo. something new from the version 1.5. This, uh, but I haven't used it yet. 
I should, but I haven't used it. Uh, so basically, it will allow you to change. You have up to eight devices that you can use in the AIO scanner, and then you can have the possibility to uh, change that over here, but I haven't used it. And that would probably give you more versatility. Okay, but that I will probably play a little bit around and show you how it's done. How it's done. So um, this is it for the how to use the AIO scanner. Okay. In the next video, what we're going to see is how we can troubleshoot in the AIO scanner in case it doesn't work. Okay. So thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one.